Alright guys, low budget video editing here on my, my mobile phone, but um, the side pressure lift that I just put out, obviously uh, a lot of people talking about that, a lot of people, um, I've had a lot of people ask me questions on how it translates to a match and I'm going to put a clip for you right um, in a moment that is going to be my best example. It's of course my recent match with Ryan Scott round four, he takes my wrist and I don't care, the match is not over and, and I win using side pressure. Um, the key to side pressure, guys, and to give you guys the... Um, actually, I'll come back to that thought. Here's the video that I wanted to show you. Ready, go! Yeah, come on, Ryan! Push it! Push it, Ryan! Push it! Push it! Guys, you've seen the video, you've seen the training, you've seen the way I just pulled Ryan Scott, uh, the milkman Ryan Scott. Um, the key to side pressure, guys, is first and foremost that you have to have your hand secured. And when I say hand secured, I don't mean hand control, I don't mean wrist flexion, I don't mean pronation, I don't really actually mean anything in terms of a specific position. What I mean is that your hand must be secure in that the state of your hand is no longer going to change. What I mean by that is if I drive sideways and as I drive sideways, my, my, my rotation is collapsed or my, my wrist goes as I'm driving sideways, I would consider that a non-secure hand. Okay, a secure hand could be all the way back here. As long as when I drive sideways, nothing changes in the, 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 the connection or the shape of where my hand is relative to my opponent and relative to my own elbow. I would consider that a secure hand. Ultimately, this comes back down to a Todd Hutchins theory, which he shared to me, where he's like, hand, the whole hand doesn't matter thing can be elaborated on to more specifically mean that if my hand is back and your hand is pronated, if my side pressure here is greater than your side pressure here, well, I'm going to win, aren't I? Um, that's a pretty basic sense of it. But the thing about it is, like I said, if you go to drive sideways and your the condition of your hand changes as you drive sideways, what you will experience is a very drastic drop in how much side pressure you can deliver into your opponent's arm. So you really do need to establish and understand that you need to secure your hand first and foremost. Um, a very basic way of securing your hand is to have amazing fingers, like the Todd Hutchins approach. Anyway. I just wanted to answer that and elaborate a little bit on that because it's um, the side pressure discussion is a good one. It's something that um, a lot of people question. A lot of new arm wrestlers say it's dangerous. A lot of people say don't do it. A lot of people um, say it's the riskiest of the four fundamentals. Um, it may be. That may be the case. Uh, but I think it's the most valuable. Um, Krasimir Kostadinov agrees with me, obviously Todd Hutchins agrees with me. People like Rob Vigent and John Brzezink, they use a very fundamentally different style of arm wrestling. They're not side pressure arm wrestlers, they're wrist flexion, pronation and back pressure, uh, i.e. bicep um, based arm wrestlers. And that is a winning strategy of course as well, but we're all different shapes and sizes. And for some of us, and it turns out for me currently, my biggest asset is side pressure. Um, there have been many world champions uh, in all different styles of arm wrestling. Um, and side pressure arm wrestlers have had their fair share. Uh, so it is, it is one of the valid approaches. At the end of the day, you need to know where your biomechanics are. You need to know what is suited to you and your body. And you need to then understand how to use that. Um, this lift is a lift I've been doing under Todd Hutchins' uh, sort of style for almost two years now. When I did the lift for the first time ever, um, I only lifted 35 kilos. It was my 1RM. And Todd kind of giggled at that when, when I did that. He said, don't worry, we're going to absolutely um, bond to that number over the next six months. And uh, we'll get it doubled. We'll get it more than doubled. And that's where the old 44% thing came in. Um, was when I was approaching Zlotty. My number had gone from 35 kilos up to... Uh, at the time, I think, going into Zlotty, it was about 60 kilos. 
going into the Zloty for this one RM. And now, as of today, which is another year and a bit later since Zloty, um, you guys have seen it. I've done an 80 kilo lift, and that is a, that's that's a PR for me. I, it's been a while since I've maxed on that, and 80 kilos is most definitely the PR. But anyway, um, it's an evolution. It's something that is a big part of the sport. I Krasimir Konstantinov to quote him. He when I asked him which of the four fundamentals he considers to be the most important, he said elbow based side pressure. So I hope Krasi does a lift. I'd like to see where Krasi's numbers are at. Honestly, I think they'll be high, obviously, but I really do think my number of 80 kilos is really at the pointy end of, of arm wrestlers in the world. I, I would love to see what Sasha can do. He's famous for side pressure, much like Todd Hutchins. I'd love to see what Jared Catteret could do. Um, but like I said, there's an, I don't anticipate Rob Vigian to be able to do um, the same numbers that I'm doing. And it's for a pretty simple reason. It's not for any disrespect. Let me clear that up. I like the way Timmy Turner put it. Um, for me to beat Rob Vigent in any lift that is specific to arm wrestling is a big achievement for me. And the reason that is, is because I respect the man as an elite arm wrestler. What he's done for almost 17 years has been at the pointy end of elite arm wrestling and something that I'm striving to do also. And um, in this day and age, it's difficult to get the, uh, the I guess let's just call it the, the runs on the board or the respect from the arm wrestling world that that, that is my reality. Um, I believe it's my reality, and I believe this lift that I've done, this 80 kilo side pressure, is one of the considerations or demonstrating factors in a case for me to prove that he's that level. Obviously, the best way to prove it is on the table, and I'll do that as soon as I get the chance. But in the meantime, I'm stuck here with Lachlan, who's doing the same things, progressing at a crazy rate, and uh, it doesn't really give the world any updated perspective. So that'll come in time. But in the meantime, it is nice. It is nice to be able to do this lift and know that there's very few people on the planet that can do the same number. Um, there's very few. And I know that the Rob Vigent fanboys have commented in my page saying, Rob will wake up and uh, have, have some wine and do 90 kilos. I promise you, he won't. He won't. Um, he won't. He just won't. He's not that style of puller. He's a bicep, wrist flexion, pronation base puller. If Rob does more than 80 kilos on this, um, I will absolutely bow down to the man and say, wow, it was a stupid idea for me to ever have a match with you because that was the one ace that I was relying on. And um, if, he's, if he has woken up side pressure, I'd be really impressed. He's become, he would have become incredibly well-rounded because it's not his style of arm wrestling. I know what Todd Hutchins, well, I don't know what the active 1RMs are for Todd Hutchins, but I do know that Todd Hutchins 1RMs for these numbers are going to be in the 75 to 85 kilo range. Um, I think that's what Todd's going to get. Uh, hopefully he submits one to RPR, Uncle John's show, and we'll know for real. But that's Todd Hutchins. That's someone who's been doing this, uh, what, he started when he was 36, he's 52 now, or something about that, I think. So... 16 years or so, he's been training side pressure, um, and he's in that realm. Sasha, I'm sure, is in that realm. Jerry Cataret, I'm sure, would be in that realm. But as for people in my weight category, I don't think there's many. And um, this, again, I want to re-emphasize, this is not a slight on Rob. This is competitive nature. This is me proving to you more than proving to Rob. And you, you being the audience... The, that is particularly the skeptical audience. I know I've got a lot of people on here who believe in it as well and see what I'm doing for real. But there's a lot of people on here that, uh, that, enjoy, that just, eh, I'm not going to say they don't believe, but they enjoy the ridicule and they really think that uh, the whole delusional Ryan Bowen series, kind of that crowd of people, they think it's a load of rubbish. They don't think I'm at the level that I'm saying that I think I'm at. Yeah, sorry, my, my, my battery went flat, it dropped out, I don't know where it was at. I'm now plugged in on 1%. Um, anyway, I think I was talking to the, the skeptics, the doubters, the people that genuinely think I'm delusional. And I think there's a good crowd of them, there's, there's, there's a good crowd of them. Um, this lift is for you guys, it's for you. Like, prove me wrong. Try to tell me that this, this lift doesn't matter. That's going to be funny, because if you tell me this lift doesn't matter, you're also telling Todd Hutchins this lift doesn't matter, you're also telling Krasimir Kostadino this lift doesn't matter. And you're definitely telling Sasha Andreev this lift doesn't matter. So, you're either going to tell me this lift doesn't matter, or you're going to, 
or, or go and find someone uh, that's crushing my numbers. Uh, and when you can't, uh, you're either going to have to just be silent and pray that I don't actually beat anyone of note when I finally do get to travel. Or what else can you pray for? That my weight, my weights are fake. Maybe, maybe you could, maybe you could hope for that. Um, I don't know. But anyway, I enjoyed the lift. I'm glad Uncle John's finally given me the opportunity to demonstrate. Now I don't even know if Rob's going to make the lift. Um, I hope he does. If Rob makes the lift, I, I think a good respectable number for Rob's going to be somewhere around 65 kilos. Um, 65 kilos, maybe 70. But I don't think any higher than 70. 70 would be really big, given that Rob is not this style of arm wrestler. This is the same for Lachlan Adair. I wouldn't expect Lachlan Adair to have a big number on this, because again, he's like Rob. Wrist flexion, bicep, pronation. Not an elbow-based side pressure guy. So, and interestingly enough, if you ask Lachlan, the one place he doesn't like being with me on the table is in a hook. And it's because of this side pressure. Uh, even though he can defeat me, as you know, um, Lachlan will say, no, that's the one spot that's, that sucks, um, despite his bicep pressure. It's the side pressure that makes it different. But anyway, hope you guys are, are well. And, uh, I'm really fascinated by this side pressure conversation that's unfolding thanks to Uncle John. Um, and yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, are you? I'd really love to hear from the from the upset crowd, from the people who think that this is just the, the just fight the fact. They 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 squirm the Chris Gobby kind of people that that wish I would stay a novice, that wish I would stay an amateur, that wish I would never become a pro, that once I did become a pro, that I'd stay a low-end pro. It must really, I don't know, I, there's a satisfaction to knowing that it bugs those people watching me progress. And like I said, numbers don't lie. Gone from 35 kilos to 60 kilos to 80 kilos over a, what is it, two and a half year period of particularly focusing on side pressure. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to show it to you one more time, the lift, and how it translated to my match against Ryan Scott. And don't forget who Ryan Scott is. If, if you want to know who Ryan Scott is, just ask Devin. He's beaten everyone in the Oceanic region multiple times. He took the opening round off Ron Bath in a super match. And uh, whether you want to say he was uh, not himself or not, he had three months to prepare for a super match with Lachlan Adair and he declared he was ready and he had told Australia that he was going to win against Lachlan. So it doesn't sound like a particularly out of shape Ryan Scott to me. Uh, sounds to me like my side pressure was too much. All right, guys. See ya.